What's up, guys? Happy Saturday. Back in the backyard here, helping you guys get ready for NFL Week 3. Today's show, I want to talk about should you panic? Do we hit the panic button? Should we trade away some of our well-researched out players that we drafted? Should we get rid of them? Should we dump them off? Should we abandon our beloved fantasy football players after only two weeks? I'm going to talk about it because there's a lot of players that are, I would say, in question mark right now. I've got a list of them here, including Joe Burrow, Austin Eckler, Najee Harris, Damian Pierce, two of my guys as well, Brees Hall, Alexander Madison, and more and more are in question right now. So what should we do with them? Should we keep them? Should we trade them? Should we panic? Should we get into a panic frenzy? Let's talk about it right now. Before I do, guys, make sure you guys do smash thumbs up. It takes 30 seconds, not even 30, it takes two seconds of your time. Smash it. I know it doesn't take much at all. Smash the thumbs up button, guys. Hit the thumbs up and leave a comment below. Who has kind of crapped the bed for you and are you what are you going to do with them after this video, after I give you guys some insight here and some um, some data to provide you know, on your player and stuff like that to see what you want to do, okay? So let's talk about a panic button. Should we hit it? So let's talk about some players that are in panic mode right now. But it's only, again, first and foremost, I want to say it's only been two weeks. So let's just relax. We're outside. You know, we got our feet in the grass. We're grounding ourselves. Let's take a deep breath here and say, hold on a second, Okay. Let's first of all, foremost, do not panic. Okay. First of all, it's two weeks. Okay. Whether you're 0 and 2, 2 and 0, 1 and 1, it doesn't matter. There's tons of time to come back and tons of time to pad on that 2 and 0 lead. Okay. Tons of time. So, first and foremost, no, you don't panic. Second of all, if you got 16 rounds, you got a ton of depth, right? Damien, not, Damien Pierce is not performing. I'm cool. I got Jameer Gibbs. I got Bijan. In one league, I got Derrick Henry. I've got RB depth, and it's the right RB depth, mind you. Again, I'm not tooting my own horn, but there's a lot of players that have gone down or have not performed that just weren't drafted by myself. Now, some people say, well, Joe Madison was recommended by you in your 16 rounds. I have to make some recommendations, but if you watch all the mock drafts that I do in 16 rounds, I didn't draft Madison any of those leagues. I didn't draft any of these players, okay, that have crapped the bed significantly. Mind you, Nick Chubb injury out of my control. I personally didn't have any stock in him, but he was a recommendation in 60 rounds because he was a safe play barring any type of injury. Okay. Nick Chubb. It happens. Okay. Very tragic. Nick Chubb went down. J.K. Dobbins, who wasn't on my list, went down. Uh, again, this is why running back depth is so crucial. All right. We see Alexander Madison. A lot of people drafted him as their RB1, RB2. And I told you he was a backup. Years to be a backup. You know, always a backup. Once a backup, always a backup. Now, the only person proving me wrong against that and has in the past was Austin Eckler and Tony Pollard is doing well so far. Again, it's very early. But again, should you panic? No, absolutely not. Now, let's talk about some players that are crap in the bed here. Najee Harris. Let's get right to it. Najee Harris sitting 48th amongst running backs in PPR right now after two weeks. Okay. About 11 points combined. Now, is Jalen Warren the solution? No. Now, I looked at the stats. Jalen Warren is a guy that literally like when you look at him he's more of a PPR guy he does look more explosive on some plays but I think that the Steelers just haven't figured out how that offense is going to run are they going to be running the ball more are they going to be throwing them Deontay Johnson was banged up Pat Frymuth didn't do well last week Kenny Pickett still trying to get settled in I still think there's time here now I don't feel warm and fuzzy he is kind of reassuring Najee's reassuring what happened last year which is a 3.8 yards per carry his lackluster performance I thought we were over that with the foot plate being gone the improved O-line and all that, and, and Kenny Pickett integrated, right? I thought this we would have been over that, but I guess we're not. So maybe some of that lackluster performance has leaked into, that sucky performance has leaked into week week uh, week three into the NFL season. We don't know. We're going to find out this week. This week's a telling tale. Now, if you have a player that's not performing well, do not sell until they have a high game. For example, Najee. I'm getting a feeling he's going to crap the bet all year. Once he has a touchdown, he has a good game, then and only then do you consider selling these players. Do not sell low, sell high, because you will not get the, you know, the return on investment that you want. Once they have a boom game, one of two things can happen. You can trade them, and they continue to go off and you made a mistake or you trade them and you got rid of a potential dud. That's why you got to spot the trend. That's what we're trying to do right now. Is he a dud this year? This one's a tough one. He is leaning towards dud, but I only think he does get better. But will he be explosive? Will he be amazing? No, I don't see that. Uh, he's going to have to get a lot of volume. He's going to have to run better. He's had some tough matchups. But at the end of the day, guys, you know, I'm seeing a downward trend for Najee, okay? Austin Eckler. I told you not to draft him. Why? Because there's going to be a decline. He's missing a second week. Let's move on to Eckler here, okay? You know, what do you do with him? If you got him, again, I told you not to draft him. He's already missing. He's missed two precious weeks, guys. This is really going to hurt you. You don't want to, 
you know, go zero and three or zero and two or what? One and what is it? Uh, you know, two and or one and two, right? You don't want to lose games because your first overall pick has crapped the bed. Already hurt from what he, I saw a video of him actually saying that he wants to come back uh, and he doesn't want to hurt fantasy teams. But too bad you're not on you're not on the field. That means you're not performing. So I look at a guy like Austin Eckler and I'm seeing like downward trends as I predicted. Now mind you, he's going to come back have some big games, but this injury could linger, like I talked about, right? And even in week one, Joshua Kelly had you know similar amount of volume that Eckler did. So. You know, Kelly didn't do good week two, but understand, guys, that they want to, they want to establish a run game when Eckler's there, and they both got, you know, similar volume. So that's a concern. I told you Kelly's going to be integrated. So once Eckler comes back, has a big week, I would consider trading him and securing a good player that's been consistent. You're look, we're looking for consistency here, okay? We're not panicking. We're going back, you know, we're leaning back into this and, and looking at it and saying, hey, you know, this is the trend. This is what's happening. Prior to the season, I suspected Eckler was going to decline. Now he's declining due to injury. Probably not a good sign. Najee, I had some suspicions that he was lackluster. He's been proving that. Once they have high games, then you may want to consider trading him. Again, you got to do your own analysis, okay? Let's keep going here. Joe Burrow, sitting 31st amongst quarterbacks. Should you panic? In this case, I would. Now, Joe Burrow was a guy that I was fading. I was more on the Herbert Lawrence trade. Now, mind you, Lawrence had a bad week last week. Herbert did okay. He's being solid, knock on wood. But Joe Burrow is definitely a cause for concern, sitting 31st amongst quarterbacks only after two weeks because he's got 18 points combined in the first two weeks which is ridiculous so again similar situation we're looking for a big game and see what we could do with him okay Dak Prescott crap in the bed 25 points over two weeks sitting 25th amongst quarterbacks a guy that is known for throwing interceptions you know a guy I avoided this year be cautious with him. And again, hopefully some of these guys bounce back, and it's very possible they do, but you got to be monitoring the situation, okay? Damian Pierce, we got some concern here. Mind you, he's got a tough matchup going into NFL Week 3. When you're looking at starts and sits, he's got a tough matchup. He almost feels like a sit, and based on the first two weeks, 12.2 points combined, you almost feel like you want to sit him. He's sitting 44th amongst running backs. This is a damn shame because we look at a guy who's talented, he's got heart, and he's the only running back there. They got Suckle Terry, but he's done nothing. He sucks. He just can't seem to get it going. Texans can't establish a run game to save their lives. It's been terrible. Mind you, Tank Dell, he takes a step up. One of my sleepers, I told you, stash it all rosters. But Damian Pierce, they just can't seem to get it done in the running game. So, again, watch the trend. Possibly sell high, okay? This guy, I told you, decline was definitely happening. Josh Jacobs, definitely want to sell high on this guy because I saw this coming. Now, I watched week one or two when he was playing, and he looks a little bit like he's put on some weight here as well. He had the contract issue, got paid for the year. Pretty good, pretty good bag he got there. But again, when you look at a guy like Josh Jacobs, right? 19 points over two weeks. Again, everybody was drafting him based on last year, had a good year. But remember, Remember, he was always a mediocre running back in fantasy, okay? He was never that good. He always used to come off around three to four with the David Montgomery's of the world over the past couple of years. Now, all of a sudden, because he had a big year last year, everyone was drafting him early second round. No, pump the brakes here. He's proving that he sucks as I thought he would, okay? Josh Jacobs, only 19 points over two weeks. Alexander Madison, I told you he sucks. I don't think he's broken out over a run over six yards this year. Madison, garbage, 18 points over the past two weeks. They brought in Cam Akers. Now, do you acquire Cam Akers? From what I hear in NFL Week 3, he's not even starting. Does have way more explosive upside than Madison, but you got a problem of, like, he hasn't been able to stay healthy. He's got to learn the playbook. It's it's a messy situation. This is a scenario where you don't want to be fooled because if Madison comes in has a big game, is that going to stay consistent? Maybe, maybe not. So monitor the situation as well, but I know that Madison is a definite trade as soon as he breaks out and has a good game. I don't trust him, okay? This is the opposite scenario to Madison. Brees Hall, who's been down 16.8 points over the past couple weeks. Last week was a dud week. Four, four touches, which is ridiculous. Now, he did have a tough matchup versus the Cowboys, but you look at a guy like Brees Hall, no way but up. We saw Dalvin Cook fumble in, in, in the week two. He's been he's been on a down downhill over the past couple of years anyway. Dalvin Cook was the biggest waste of $9 million ever spent pretty much in the NFL, minus the time they paid $128 million to like, uh, who was it? Uh, I can't even remember his name. Carson Wentz. Remember that? Remember the Eagles paid Carson Wentz like $128 million. This was a mega contract like four or five years ago. And I went out and I said, this is the big waste of money. People thought I was crazy. And sure enough, where's Carson Wentz now, right? Um, going back to what I was saying here, Brees Hall, tons of opportunity, tons of upside. 
they got to run the ball. He's their only weapon. Zach Wilson can't throw to save his life. So you got to look at a guy who's going to have to get the volume. Dalvin Cook's on a decline, fumbled last week in week two. This is trending upwards for Brees Hall. Okay. And understand his knee, just trying to get back into it. Right. So, you know, week one had that breakout run. Didn't look, you know, tip top shape, but he's good. And he's only going to step up. So Brees Hall, do not panic. Look for this week again. You know, he's got a good matchup this week. So he's got a good matchup. We'll see how he does. They got to feed him. I would definitely, you know, if he has a breakout game, I would hold on to him. He's that special. He's special talent. And he's going to trend upwards as the season goes. And Zach Wilson gets more comfortable. And Garrett Wilson, that offense gets comfortable without Aaron Rodgers. And hopefully they can start figuring out a way to integrate Brees Hall so they actually win some games because he is their saving grace, really, at this point, okay? Um, I also mentioned J.K. Dobbins, who was, a, you know, a bust here. I got him listed here as a player, uh, not a panic player, but a player that, you know, crapped the bed. So what do you do? Again, it's, it's a crappy situation with Hill or whoever the backup is there. Gus, it's not really going to be a solution for you, but when you look at a player like Hill and just maybe pick them up off waiver, you can use these guys as trade bait to bait for guys like Brees Hall and stuff like that after they have pinnacle games, okay? So you got to like look at trends. You got to look at situations. You got to look at what backups are doing. Like, for example, Dalvin Cook fumbling. Brees Hall is trending upwards. Got to look at matchups. You know, some some of these players may have just had tough matchups the first two weeks. You got to be aware of that as well, okay? Also want to talk about a wide receiver that's been like absolutely crap in the bed is Jamar Chase, but that kind of falls into, you know, the whole Joe Burrow thing and his injury and all that excuse, right? But what a damn shame that you've got this guy that you made the highest paid quarterback of all time and he's crap in the bed i mean talk about buyer's remorse on on joe burrow but that's rippled down making jamar chase the 55th 55th guys going after two weeks amongst uh, wide receivers right now rankings he only has 17.2 points combined over two weeks that is a shame because you got so much great talent and then you have joe burrow who can't just get it done and he got paid this much Absolute crazy. So in regards to Jamar Chase, he's a guy where I would watch. I wouldn't trade him. I think that he can only get better in a scenario where they had a rough start. He is trending upwards. But again, very, very shameful for guys like Jacobs, guys like Jamar Chase, guys like Brees Hall. So much talent. We kind of expected a slow start from Brees Hall. Nonetheless, he's not not gotten it done, right? So again, panic? No. But observe, yes. Okay, observe, watch, look at the trends, watch a depth chart. You guys are going to be rock solid, okay? And again, this is why I tell you in 16 rounds, you got to make sure you guys have depth. Depth is key. Make sure you have optimal roster with a backup plan for a backup plan. And robust RB is key because once you have, you know, all this depth at running back, you're going to be covered in scenarios like this. And then with running backs, you got to trend towards those younger guys. We talked about it that are going to be solid with upside. For example, right? Nick Chubb, older, got hurt. I mean, it could happen to anybody, but it happened. You know, I know maybe it's a bad example to say youth is a big part of it, but it is. You know, knock on wood, Bajan looks good. Knock on wood, some of these younger running backs look good. So, guys, listen, don't panic. It's only week two. Let's win week three. Let's go in. Let's start the right people. And if you're looking at starts and sits, go back and check an episode out a couple days ago. We did it on starts and sits. Go watch it. Go in with a lie mentality. Go in with confidence and do not panic, all right? Subscribe, thumbs up, drop a comment below. Who's crap the bed for you? Love to get some feedback here and make sure you guys are turning on the bell to this channel and subscribe. We'll talk soon, guys. Have a great weekend. I'm out.